This is Twit. Uh, we have this really interesting story uh, from Plagiarism Today uh, that uh, I just bring up. Jonathan Bailey, uh, the author of this, has been on the show before, too. He uh, resides in New Orleans, I believe, and uh, has been on the show with us quite a few times and always has an eye for um, interesting uh, intellectual property matters. And and so I commend his entire post to you to get all the details of this. But what the gist of it is, is that uh, the way that Doctor Who has set up its um, writing arrangements, um, instead of the uh, creators of the show having all the copyrights in the show, um, the individual writers do. Uh, and it, as he points out, if the copyright control for most TV shows, including sci-fi shows, is pretty straightforward. Star Trek, for example, is controlled by CBS and Paramount, as we know. Star Wars is controlled by Disney. Uh, in Doctor Who's case, though, uh, back in the beginning of the show, he, he writes, up until roughly the fifth Doctor, the writers often retained copyright in what they created. Um, so, uh, it gets a little muddy and, uh, it makes things, uh, confusing in, uh, disputes about who owns the doctor. Uh, Mike, have you taken a look at this? I did. Yeah. I thought it was super interesting. Um, you know, I don't know much about Doctor Who. I know it's very popular in the UK and and in all points uh, Europe, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's a phenomenon that you know um, that we're not all that familiar with here in in the U.S. when it comes to uh, ownership rights with respect to certain characters. I mean, of course, that's been litigated as we've talked about mm -hmm. on the show before in terms of whether you can claim individual copyright protection for certain characters in films. Um, mm -hmm. but we don't really typically run into disputes dealing with ownership interests associated with different components of a particular audiovisual work. So it's a rather right. unique dispute in, in that respect and could be really messy if these rights ultimately have to be uh, litigated. Uh, so yeah, it's right. an interesting, interesting story. Last week we were turning, we were talking about Byzantine music licensing laws as we often do and how it's difficult to determine who owns what rights to a musical work. And that's what this is reminding me of is, is when you don't have one centralized rights holder who has been assigned all the rights that might otherwise right. accrue to people like the writers uh, that you can, you can get yourself bogged down in, in uh, a mess of trying to determine who owns what. And I, I think that's what we're seeing uh, or, or could see. Um, apparently this dispute is um, not as big of a deal as, as, uh, was thought uh, when it was first reported uh, in the mirror in the UK. Uh, the, the problem was um, the estate of Marvin Heisman, the creator of Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, took issue with an episode uh, that introduced a new character that turned out to be Lethbridge Stewart's grandfather. Lethbridge Stewart uh, is a character from the series that the estate of Marvin Heisman claims they hold the rights to. So uh, if you're a fan of the doctor, uh, uh, you you may find that your TARDIS is spinning through time trying to <laughs> decide uh, who owns the rights to the characters and, and themes in particular shows. Peter, any thoughts on this? No, I, I, I really don't. I'm not familiar with the show, so it's it's hard to really get uh, too worked up about something like this. <laughs> Matt? Uh, I, I've seen a couple episodes, uh, so I guess I'm the expert. Um, Doctor Who's great, and uh, but it, it's interesting that it took him five seasons to figure out that we should own the copyrights on this. Um, <laughs> but also this falls under my bucket of like, this is what happens when you have the continual extension of the copyright act and um this may not have been an issue if copyright wasn't forever and 70 years so 